Greetings, um, this is Uncle Travelling Matt here and today is the end of day three of our Bongo Scotland trip and we are currently parked uh, up next to a beach outside the town of Bally Vanich in North East in the Outer Hebrides. Now last time that you saw us we were on the Isle of Skye um, at the port of Uig which was where the ferry was going to take us this morning. Uh, to get to the Hebrides and, and we, we caught that ferry, uh, no problems there and it was a pretty good journey wasn't it? Yeah. So what do you think of that ferry? Um, it was quite a nice ferry there, it's like not as big as the ones we used to, like I said, but um, yeah it's alright, it's a nice little journey. Yeah, it was pretty, pretty yeah. Had like a cafe and some decks and stuff. Nothing special, like I say, but it was a nice yeah. journey. Well, the scenery was nice, and yeah. uh, it wasn't actually that long. It wasn't as long as I thought it would be. Um, and the weather was fine, which is pretty good. No um, rain. No rain. No rain. That was nice. And then we landed at the port of Tarbot on the Isle of Harris. Now, Harris and Lewis are actually one island, but they're referred to as two for some reason that I don't understand. So what we did, we were going to just kind of go around Harris. Um, today but then we realized that our day that we'd set aside for exploring Lewis is a Sunday and they take the Sabbath like really seriously here like everything's shut so basically we tried to make the most of what we could today yeah because what we didn't want to do is like all the all the major stuff to see which like in terms of cultural stuff is on Lewis um, like we would have been hitting on a Sunday when it was all shut. So what we've done today is we've we've done the cultural sites. Um, so we haven't been on any hikes or anything today. But we we went up um, towards the north of Lewis, near to Stornoway. We didn't go into Stornoway. Um, and we we had um we had like a kind of lunch, I guess it was, at a at a cafe, didn't we? Yeah, it was quite a nice little cafe. It was like a old church hall converted into a cafe. Mm -hmm. Um. Obviously, the prices shocked us a bit. Yeah, 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 it was a bit like Scandinavian prices. So I think it was five quid for a soup. Yeah, and five quid for a bacon roll, and they were literally the cheapest things. And I think it's because they have to import everything in. True, and there's also like not that many people, so no competition. And... Yeah. So, and we are actually surprised, like, this is meant to be the height of the tourist season, and it's like the year when, because of COVID, everyone's holding within Britain, and yet, to be honest with you, like, there's a lot of stuff that's shut, and not, not a lot going on, really. Yeah. So, yeah, we went to the Kalish Standing Stones, which is the most famous thing in the Hebrides, and it's basically like, well, I thought it was a stone circle, but it isn't, is it? No, um, it's, it's quite interesting. Like, there's loads of theories of what it could be. Uh, one of them being the like it's a Celtic cross. Mm -hmm. And like if you look from it, like from a crow sort of view up at there, you could see it was a Celtic yeah. cross. But, it was, but um, that was like one of the radical views. Yeah. So the, the, that that theory is that it was basically a prophecy that Christianity would take over. Um, I don't actually think that's why it was constructed that way, um, but it is quite a cool story. And um, yeah, so it's a Celtic cross because the circle, which was the first bit that was built, would be like the the, the, the circle in the cross, and then you've got like the, the the long arm and the shorter arms across, and they are like lines of stones. And according to the visitor centre, they were built later, and it was pretty dramatic. Although. Thing is, with like stone circles, they, they look pretty amazing, and it's amazing like how old they are. And that one's five thousand years old, but actually, when you get there, they're just a circle of stones. I mean, yeah, but like when you've got all that background knowledge and you look yeah. at it, it is much yeah. better. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And actually, the, it was one of three sets of stones there. And we did see the others, and to be honest, they weren't like as good, but they were still pretty dramatic. Um, and it was must have been quite a place in prehistoric days. Um, then we went on to a brock. I forget the name of it, but we went to it. And a brock is it was like two thousand years old, like kind of round tower, 
that people lived in. Uh, but unfortunately, that was like, you couldn't go in it because they were doing it up. So we only saw it from the outside. And actually, that's the second rock that we've seen because the first one we saw when we went to the Orkney Isles. And it's probably worth mentioning our Orkney Isles trip. I think we went in about 2015, I think, to the Orkney Isles. And aside from like trips to Edinburgh and Glasgow, and Stirling, it was really my first exploration of Scotland properly, and certainly Thomas's. And it was also our first ever road trip, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Like, constantly um, on these trips when we're driving through, we're always constantly like, oh, this is like Orkney, our first ever road trip. Mm. You could say that kind of introduced us to the whole doing road trips. Right? Yeah. It, it probably did. I mean, it's the first road trip I'd done because I've always travelled by like plane and did train we, and uh, stuff. Did we film any of that? We did, yeah. So that's oh. on the channel. So check check out the videos. But um, but yeah, it's like we did that in a Volkswagen Polo, and we we virtually killed the Polo doing it. Yeah. Uh, we did. It's about, a nice car. Yeah. We, well, before we went to Orkney, the front fell off in Orkney. So yeah. But um, yeah, so that was the Orkney trip, and and this is like very similar because. The thing is with Orkney, it's not scenically amazing in terms of big mountains and that, like Sky, but it's wild. It's completely wild and crazy. Yeah, and this has the same feel, and particularly where we are now, which I'll talk about later. So, like Lewis and Harris, like Harris is really mountainous and quite dramatic. Lewis was kind of flatter, but very rocky. Like there was rocks everywhere and a big peat bog in the middle. And had you come across peat bogs before? So, I'd seen them in Ireland, but I'd not seen them anywhere else. No, it was quite, like, yeah. Um, but we also went into this sort of recreation, I think, of a, an old village, um, which, like, the houses, they were built in a way, which been, they've been building these kind of houses for but, Well, I think they were original houses, like, they were crofts, and it was called a black house village. But they, they'd all been abandoned, and then they'd kind of oh. used the shells of them and, like, made them as new. Yeah. Um, or as old. And um, they were obviously burning peat in there, mm. and they had, like, this quite distinctive sort of smell. Yeah. And and we saw, like, there was a bit of a video about cutting peat in there and how they do it. And then later, when we were driving back through the peat bog, we, we actually saw peat that had been cut, didn't we? So... Yeah, and there was a guy doing the whole weaving thing as well, wasn't there? Yeah, yeah. We went into the museum, and um, the like the guy said, "Do you want to see how the weaving machine works?" And we're like, "Sure." He was like, "Shoot." It was like Harris Tweed is world famous. It's like the best tweed, and that was kind of almost Harris Tweed because it was Lewis, which is sort of the same island. So yeah, so yeah, we went to these black houses. That was nice. Then we kind of came back and it started to rain, but it wasn't really a problem because we were driving. And then we caught, we went right down to the south of Harris, and um, there, that like the southern bit of Harris, south of Tarbot, the beaches were unbelievable. Like these white sands, and we saw this rainbow at one point that was absolutely amazing. Yeah, it was like a nice clear blue. Hey, it was the best rainbow I've ever seen. Like the beaches, they look look like some sort of beaches you'd get in like Spain and stuff, except without all the people. And uh, but like, although they look so nice and all just tropical, I don't know. Mm. Um, you'd never want to swim in them; you'd be freezing. So yeah, and then we we crossed over on this uh, second ferry trip of the day uh, to. Um, to northeast, um, but it was actually to a, a smaller island that's connected to northeast called uh, by a causeway. It's called Bernersey. But um, yeah, what was that ferry trip like? Oh yeah, that one was um, a lot smaller. The ferry was like uh, um, there wasn't really much action, if any action really inside. It was just inside was just like a thing with chairs, and then there was like a bit of an outside deck. Um, with also chairs, but uh, the crossing, like it was really rocky. The sea, because of the wind, it was real. It's really windy today, but the wind sort of made the waves like 
massive, so the ferry just went woo woo. Yeah, and we kept getting splashed by the water, and it was pretty. It was pretty dramatic. Um, a lot of car alarms went off. Yeah. Because of the rocking and stuff. Yeah, and then we got here, and we're on now on North East, and um, I have to say it's totally different to Lewis and Harris. It's it's by and large just pretty flat, but it's like the land time forgot. It's just like yeah, desolate and like empty, empty and very very windy. So I mean, you can I don't know if you can sense the fact that the van is wobbling about and being buffeted by the wind. It's really like that's why we're in here because we can't sit outside, even though it's quite warm in terms of the temperature. The wind is just nuts. <laughs> yeah. So that's that. So tomorrow we're going to explore north and south east. So it's a bit of a chilled out day tomorrow. Yeah. And then we cross over the day after back into Lewis and Harris. Uh, and then we've got a day in them. And then it's onwards back to the mainland uh, to do the um, Northwest 500. So there we are. Keep traveling. Busy.